Ephesians 4.29 says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but to that which is good, to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. What are the words that you speak? Do the words that you speak edify? Do the words that you speak encourage? Are your words honourable before the Lord? Do your words honour God? Or do the words that you speak just satisfy your feelings? What you speak is what you will get. Just as what you sow is what you will reap. You may say, well, I said this last year, nothing's happened. It's a matter of time. You've got to understand that we live in a spiritual world. This video will help you to control and to tame your tongue. And in order to do that, I'm gonna use six points that will help you do that. So let's go. So number one, rely on God's strength to help you. Rely on God to control and to tame your tongue. With human efforts alone, it's very hard to control your tongue because I believe it's truly by the grace of God that a man can tame and control his tongue. I mean, James said, the tongue can no man tame. I guess he was referring to how hard it is to not speak those foul words against someone when they offend you. So you need the help of God to truly tame your tongue. It takes God to not speak those foul words towards a person that's deserving it. I remember my friend so offended me. Oh gosh, what word did I, what word under the sun did I not want to speak towards that friend? But I said no and I refused and absolutely refused to speak words that not that were not edifying, words that were not honorable unto God. And I literally lay on my back, looked at the ceiling and I said, Lord, my response is love. Lord, I will speak words that edify. I will speak words that inspire and I will speak words that, were, that are honorable unto you. It was so bad, but I said, not because of man will I speak words that are not honorable unto the Lord. I remember that day I literally messed up my room looking for my phone to get to my Bible. I had to get to 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 7 in the NLT version, which talks about love being kind, love being patient, love not bearing any wrong, love not giving up. I literally remember holding up my phone like this and meditating the scripture, speaking the scripture, speaking it and speaking it and speaking it until I was brainwashed by the scripture. Because I refuse to let corrupt communication proceed out of my mouth i said no no way because i have to tame and control my tongue so you have to rely on god's strength to help you tame and control your tongue man's efforts are not enough a man can decide today and say oh i'm gonna control my tongue i'm gonna learn how to do it and can successfully do that but it's a matter of time before he is put to the test and that thing goes out the window so that's why I said it's truly by the grace of God that a man can control his tongue. So rely on God's strength. You don't need to do it alone. You can tame your tongue with God's help. Number two, dedicate your heart and tongue to the Lord every day. You face new circumstances and new conversations each day. When you wake up in the morning, you say, Lord, I'm gonna speak words that inspire, words that encourage, words that edify. I'm gonna speak words of progress. I'm gonna speak words that minister grace. I'm gonna speak words that minister life because you are a life-giving spirit. David said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Let your words be honorable unto God. Number three says, put your heart in tune with God's spirit by daily reading his word. This kind of goes with number two, where I said to dedicate your heart and tongue to the Lord. When you wake up in the morning, you read your devotional, you study your Bible, you read your scriptures for the day, and you put your heart in tune with God's word. Timothy said that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And I believe that when you speak in other tongues in the morning, there's that mingling of your spirit and God's spirit. There's that communion, there's that koinonia, there's that fellowship. And I believe it will be hard for corrupt communication to proceed out of your mouth. Number four, take responsibility for the words that you speak. The Bible says that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. 
every idle word that you speak, you will give account to God for in the day of judgment. Every idle word that I speak, I will give account to the Lord. Let your communication be honourable unto the Lord. Take responsibility for what is about to proceed out of your mouth. Not take responsibility for what has proceeded out of your mouth. Because you may have said something foul and then you have to take responsibility for it. But you can actually take responsibility for what is about to come out of your mouth. Take responsibility for what you speak. Number five, ask for forgiveness for any unloving words or attitudes. We've all said words that we regret. We've all said words towards other people that we regret. Does it feel good when we say it? Oh yeah. But you regret it when you've calmed down and when you thought about it. Always be the first one to say sorry first, which is something that's um, quite hard for some people because when you have nothing to say sorry for and you're saying sorry, it doesn't make sense. But always be the one to always say sorry, even when it's not your fault. That's humility. And I want to read something to you. This is Luke 17, 3 to 4. It says, Be alert. If you see your friend going wrong, correct him. If he responds, forgive him. Even if it's personal against you and repeated seven times through the day and seven times he says, I'm sorry, I won't do it again, forgive him. Another one I wanted to read is Ephesians 4, 26 to 27. It says, go ahead and be angry. You do well to be angry. Meaning someone may have offended you and you have every right to be angry. But don't use your anger as fuel for revenge. Don't get revenge. Respond in love. Trust me, it works. It doesn't make sense, but it works. And don't stay angry. Don't go to bed angry. Don't go, don't go to bed with anger in your heart. It does no good to you. You won't even sleep. Don't give the devil that kind of foothold in your life. Don't give him that pleasure. Anger is not of the Lord. Number six, learn to speak words that will encourage, comfort, inspire, and edify. Colossians says, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how ye ought to answer every man. When somebody comes up to you and says, I'm grateful for you, thank God for you. Learn to answer every man. Learn to say, God bless you. Learn to speak words of blessings. When somebody comes up to you and says, F you. Learn to say, I love you with the love of the Lord. Learn to respond in love. Let your revenge be love. Overwhelm them with love. I don't say kill them with love. We don't kill them. Let your words inspire someone. Let not just your words, but your life inspire someone let your smile minister life onto someone because you smiled at someone today that person is bubbled up with joy because you smiled at that person christ lives in you remember you need to portray that life you need to portray the persona of christ let everything you do everything you say because we're talking about taming our tongue here everything that you say let it edify someone let your words be full of life.